This water has been subjected to a number of man-made pollutants. And as you can see, its condition is extremely unhealthy, teeming with disease. However, after my solution is introduced, it begins to change, taking on an entirely different character. Finally, the conversion is complete, and the pollutant is gone. You are watching the surface of the liquid in this flask. At one time, it was swimming with malignant cancerous cells taken from a human liver, until my nanotech machines went to work on it, changing the malignant cancer cells into benign, healthy ones. We here at Claiborne University are very fortunate to have someone as gifted as Dr. Stephen Ledbetter on our staff. His latest developments in nanotechnology have perched him on the leading edge of a stunning medical breakthrough. <laughs> Dr. Ledbetter will be happy to answer questions. How are the uh, nanobots able to change the cancer cells? They change them on a molecular level. You must understand that in the science of nanotechnology, we are dealing with objects which are measured in nanometers. A nanometer is one billion of a meter. I have been able to successfully engineer molecule-sized machines which can enter a cell and repair it, changing the molecular configuration of that cell and altering its very being. How do these machines know which cells to enter? They're programmed to identify specific cells and recognize when they're not behaving the way they should. But the best part of it is they know how to repair what they find. So what you're saying is you found a cure for cancer. Cancer? Heart disease? Dandruff? <laughs> I am now working on a generation of nanobots which, when introduced into the human bloodstream, can replicate themselves and spread throughout the entire body searching out any damaged or diseased cells and healing them. Sounds like you're playing God. Let's just say, God created a flawed man. I think I can do better. <laughs> There is nothing wrong with your television. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are now controlling the transmission. We control the horizontal and the vertical. We can deluge you with a thousand channels or expand one single image to crystal clarity and beyond. We can shape your vision to anything our imagination can conceive. For the next hour, we will control all that you see and hear. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the deepest inner mind to the outer limits. Man has long worked to stave off the disease that can ravage us. But what can happen when the cure grows more fearsome than the disease? Steve, compare yourself to God. I was not comparing myself to God. I merely said I was improving on his design. University officials find statements like that blasphemous. You'll have to learn some politics if you want to keep your grant. Norman, I was kidding. This administration does not have a sense of humor. And neither apparently do you. If my research works out, the university stands to make millions off of this. They're not going to let it slip through their fingers because of a few Puritans on the Board of Regents. It's the Puritans who hold all the power. I'd hate to see you kicked off this project. Fine, Norman. I'll choose my words more carefully in the future. Stephen, give me your word. You'll adhere to federal testing procedures. They're wasting so much precious time. The nanobots are ready for live animal testing now. Stephen, only a fool makes the same mistake twice. Oh, really? And what mistake are you referring to, Norman? You almost had this entire program shut down when you proceeded with tissue testing without approval. 
If I hadn't done some damn good politicizing, you'd be out of a job, university would be out millions, and your nanobots would be imprisoned in historical scientific journals about failed experiments. All right. Don't worry, Norman. I'll be a good boy. I'm counting on it. Decontamination complete. Hey, Dr. Super Scientist. Nice presentation. You were there? Are you kidding? That presentation's all you've been talking about for months. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. I, I didn't understand a lot of the technical stuff, but the overview was fascinating. You didn't find the God reference offensive? It was a little over the top, maybe, but, but from what I saw, those little things of yours are, are nothing short of a miracle. Do you think they're going to let you go ahead with the live animal testing? Oh, you know how it is with grant boards. This new generation of nanobots is not only ready for animal experiments, they're probably ready for human testing as well. There they are, suspended in saline, too small to see. The answer to so many of the world's problems. Well, before you go saving the world, we have to talk. What's up? Uh, can you, can you come out of there? We can talk fine right here. What is it? Well, I came to ask for your blessings. Blessings for what? To marry your little sister. You popped the question? I'm getting married next month. I made her promise to let me be the one to tell you. I, I wanted to know if you'd be my best man. I wouldn't miss it for the world. What made you finally ask her? Well, that's my other news. I guess I finally feel like I have a future. What future? What? Oh, you got tenure? You're looking at the newest permanent member of the sociology department. All this good news in one day deserves a celebration. If you'll wait till I'm finished, we'll go get a bottle of champagne. Oh, I can't, Stephen. I have a doctor's appointment, but I'll, I'll take a rain check on that champagne. Good. Congratulations, Ed. Did the x-ray show anything? I believe we've located the source of your back pain. Oh, great. So what is it, a pulled muscle? I'm afraid it's not that easy. The tests indicate a mass in your pelvic region. What kind of mass? Osteosarcoma. Cancer. I'm sorry. It's, it's treatable, isn't it? I mean, what about chemotherapy? Well, unfortunately, pelvic cancer doesn't respond that well to chemo. Um, surgery? That's possible. The cancerous area is quite large. It would require a radical resection. And I, I don't care how radical. I mean, you have to operate. Andy, now, before you make that decision, you've got to understand a radical resection entails the removal of the entire leg and hip area. We do have prosthesis on the market. But we could set you up with one as soon as. Was there an option? How long would I have if I didn't get the surgery? Well, that's hard to say. How long would I have? Maybe a year. Stephen! Andy! Where have you been? You look terrible. Oh, you didn't get any sleep last night. Sudden realization of an impending marriage will do that to you. What brings you to this side of campus? Oh, I was dropping off some papers at the admin building. I thought I'd walk you back to the lab. I'm always happy for the company. Any, uh, any word from the board yet? Are they going to let you use your nanobots on, on live subjects? I haven't heard a word. The university is so backward about taking risks. Mm, uh, 
What if there was someone, say, like a terminal patient, maybe, who, who was willing to sign a release form uh, to take your nanobot pill? Andy, they're not delivered in a pill. They're delivered through injection. Whatever. Would they let you try your injection on a, on a terminal patient who had nothing else to try? The university is terrified that if anything went wrong, we'd lose our funding. I, I, I don't understand. I mean, at least you'd be giving the patient some hope. If, if something did go wrong, it couldn't be any worse than the alternative, which is death. Andy, are you all right? Oh, everything's fine. Good. No, everything's... I'm just curious. I'm just... I'll let you go. Nice to see you. Yeah. Hey, Han. Hey, Judy. What's the matter? Are you okay? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. I guess I'm just a little anxious about the wedding. <laughs> well, me too. But there's nothing to worry about. Because I already booked a banquet hall, and I've got a substitute teacher lined up for while we're on our honeymoon. Oh, I had a dream last night that we were grandparents. <laughs> it was Christmas morning, and we were surrounded by children. <laughs> and all the little ones were opening up their presents, and they were squealing with delight. <laughs> I woke up this morning, and I had a really warm feeling all over. I am so looking forward to growing old with you. test twice to be sure but I still don't believe it the cancer is 90% reduced I mean I don't understand it three days ago you had a large malignant mass at this rate of reduction it should be in complete remission by the end of the week that's just not possible Believe you did this. Have you lost your mind? I'm sorry, I didn't see any other option. Those nanobots have not even been tested in mice. There's no telling what they could do to you. You said they were ready. Ready for animal testing. That's not what you said. You said they were ready for human testing. I said they were probably ready. Speculation, conjecture, a guess. Don't tell me you don't understand that concept. 
Forgive me for saving my own life. It was either do this or die. For all I know, you may still die. The nanobots themselves could kill you. I feel fantastic. Like suddenly I have perfect eyesight, more energy. I, I'm stronger than I ever was before. Look at this. Look at this. I had a four-inch scar here for 20 years. It healed all by itself. Steven, your nanobots saved my life. They worked just like you said they would. That's not the point, Andy. You've put me in an extremely difficult position. You've put us both in one. I saved my own life. I consider that a better position than being dead. Well, I don't consider prison a better position for me. Don't worry. I injected them. You didn't. You won't be culpable. Look at it this way. I'm living proof that your nanobots work. So we go public. You don't have to spend the next two years of your life doing ridiculous lab experiments. Andy, that's not the way it would happen. First of all, you would be kicked out of the university for tampering with a high-priority research project. Then, they would probably lock you away in some unmarked medical laboratory in the backwoods of Langley, Virginia, and stick needles in you for the rest of your life. We've got to move fast and deactivate them. Deactivate? You mean kill them off? How will my body react? I have no idea, but I can't let them roam freely inside you without knowing what they'll do next. <laughs> Look, look, I feel better than I ever had my, my whole life. The, the nanobots are protecting me. They're keeping me healthy. I will not risk getting the cancer back. It's not likely to come back, Andy. Not likely. I'm not letting you deactivate them, Stephen, and that's fine. Then why did you come to me in the first place? Hey, I admit I'm a little nervous. I thought you should be monitoring them, but I'm not going to let you shut them off. Don't you see? We both stand to lose everything here. Even you could be saving lives right now. Here I am, the best testing ground you will ever have. Now, you can take advantage of that opportunity or not, but I'm not letting you turn them off. It's your choice, Steve. All right. I'll make a deal with you. We'll leave them in, and I monitor them. But the second anything starts to go wrong, we deactivate. Agreed? Agreed. Ten K next week. First prize would pay for a hell of a honeymoon. If you start showing off in public, you're going to jeopardize the entire process. <laughs> now I know how Clark Kent felt. You're not quite Superman yet, Andy. I'm as close as a human can get. You know, I'd do a lot better if I didn't have all these wires all over me. Do I really need them? It's the only way to monitor the logic gate. Logic gate? Yes, that's how the nanos communicate with the computer and with each other. You mean they're talking to each other in here? That's why they work so fast. They work as a team. Each one performs a separate task towards the same end. Can you communicate with them? I can give them commands. Can you thank them for me? I don't think their program language has words for gratitude. This out. What the hell are you doing? <clears throat> you said we were conducting tests, right?
Judy. Can't get a good cardio at this snail's pace. Snail's pace? Are you kidding? Oh, you're usually pooping out at this point. Not anymore. I'll tell you what, I'll go once around the circuit, I'll meet you back here. Drugs? No, Jude, I don't do that. Good. Because I know you've been under a lot of pressure with work, oh, with the wedding. Look, I'm fine. Let's let's go to sleep. Oh, I think I'm just gonna sleep at my place tonight. Is something wrong? No, no, I just. Every night lately, keep me up, and I really need a good night to sleep. I have parent conferences tomorrow. Come on, Jude. I won't keep you up. Andy, what has gotten you so hyper lately? If it's not the drugs, what is it? What are you talking about? Where's all the energy coming from, Andy? Because, quite frankly, it's beginning to scare me a little bit. Would you rather I be sedentary? No. I'd rather you be the Andrew Gronick I fell in love with. doing here? It's Saturday. Your nanobots don't stop working on the weekends. That's incredible. What the hell are they? They look a bit like gills. The nanobots must have interpreted your inability to breathe underwater as a physical deficiency. What are we gonna do? We're gonna deactivate. That's what we're gonna do. This experiment is over. Gloves, Stephen. You think these things are contagious? I don't know. We weren't anywhere near human testing, remember? What do you think? Well, I know they're not airborne. They're too heavy for that. And since they're programmed to act as a community, they probably won't stray out of the host body. Is that a no? That's a probable no. Okay, I'll patch into the logic gate. Good. I've got a link. Now I'll enter the command to flush from your system and deactivate. Flush from my system? They'll come out in your stool. You won't even know they're there. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Steven, Steven, hang on. I mean, give them the command to get rid of these things on my neck first. Well, I didn't develop the extended C language to be that specific. I, I think it's best if we just deactivate and then uh, deal in a more conventional way with the lesions. These are not lesions. I know. Damn. That's not how it's supposed to work. Don't tell me. I'm uh, not sure. It may be that there are so many of them that it will take time for the flush and deactivate command to spread through their ranks. 
We may be okay. Maybe. Okay, look, I'll tell you what you do. You go home, you get some sleep, you come back in the morning, and we'll see if they're gone. Meanwhile, I'll work out another way to... Are you telling me you can't stop them? I didn't say that. I said it might take time for it to work. At any rate, you'll rest better at home, and I'll be checking in on you. deactivate them. We have to use electricity and short them out. What is it? Have there been more changes? I'm not sure. I have this intense pain in the back of my head. It's yeah. kept me up all night. Let me look. Do you see anything? Just two small bumps. Ah, oh, damn it, that hurts. Sorry. They appear to be filled with some kind of fluid. What is it? They're moving. I set this up. There has to be another way to handle this. Well, I tried jamming the logic gate frequency so the nanobots couldn't communicate with each other. They switched to chemical transmission. What, what about poison or something? Anything that would hurt the machines would probably kill you. Radiation? I thought you didn't want the cancer to come back. Uh, won't electricity kill me? No, not if we regulate it properly. I'm sorry, Andy, but this is the only thing we've got left to try. Let's get on with it. I know you're anxious, but uh, you should be aware of what we're going to do here. This is an ECT machine. It's what they use for electric shock treatment, so it's uh, pretty safe. Now, what I have to do is give you just enough direct current to disrupt the nanobots. But I have to stop short of doing any real harm. Oh, this isn't going to hurt as much as I think it is. It's just going to hurt for a few seconds. I want you to bite down on this. It'll keep you from swallowing your tongue. Okay. You ready, Andy? Mm -hmm. Okay, here goes. We've got him on the run. Okay, brace yourself. It's working. It's working. Okay, one more shot, and that should get them. You ready? How do you feel? Oh, I just spent the week in the electric chair. Was it a success?
They're still inside me, aren't they? I'm afraid so. Are you sure? I've taken blood samples from different parts of your body. The nanobots have already started duplicating themselves. We've slowed down the process, but it's only a matter of time before they're back in full force. Well, we're just going to have to do it again. This time we'll increase the voltage. I don't think so. You're too weak for another dose of electricity. I almost lost you earlier. Your heart couldn't take a higher charge. Maybe that wouldn't be so terrible. Better than living as a freak. Don't give up on me, Andy. We're going to find a way to beat these things. University, um... Well, listen, we have a lot to talk about before the wedding. Uh, can I come over? No. I, I mean, it's, it's not a good time. I'm, I'm just gonna take a shower and hit the sack. Is everything okay? Everything's fine. I'm... I'm just tired. Well... Okay, take care of yourself. June. I love you. Always remember that. Me too. Night. Andy, are you all right? What's the matter? I don't have any idea what these are. What in the name of God? Oh, boy. Burned me. They've converted some of your skin cells into nematocysts. Oh. Nematocysts. They're the poison secreting cells that you find in jellyfish. They're trying to make you invulnerable to attack. Or any medical contact. I know what they're doing. They're putting up a barrier to stop me. What are we gonna do now? You just get dressed and meet me in my laboratory in two hours. They're changing something big time inside me, Stephen. They've doubled the protection around your body cavity. It's amazing. Amazing. It hurts like hell. I'm a little beyond repair, wouldn't you say, Doctor? Stephen, I don't blame you for this. I'm the one who opened Pandora's box. Andy, don't do anything crazy. We can still go public with this. We can seek the help of other scientists from around the world. I'm not putting myself through that. And I don't want you to remember me as some kind of freak. I'm sorry, Stephen. It's better this way. Andy! Andy!
won't let me die. It's ironic, isn't it? Two weeks ago, I would have sold my soul for a new lease on life. And it appears that's exactly what I have. Now I'm desperate to die and I can't. Come on. You're the only one who can help me now. What is it you want me to do? I want you to end this torture. I don't know if I can. You said yourself. And when we tried this last time, I almost died. So if you increase the voltage, you should be able to kill enough of the nanobots that they won't be able to mount a defense. By the time we're through, my body will be so fried, not even they'll be able to resuscitate me. Andy, I'm not a killer. I would have died either way. What about Judy? Stephen, look at me! Judy would be happy, married to this. What are you planning on doing with the body? It has to be cremation. Otherwise, whoever finds it will know what I've become. You, you could make it look like I burned up in a lab fire. Don't worry, Stephen. You're doing me a favor. I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm so sorry, Andy. Don't be. It's not your fault. Tell Judy I love her.
Over millions of years, man has become the very paragon of animals. But we must take care not to alter what nature has taken so long to forge, or risk being burned by the very fires of creation.